I hope you are enjoying the learning experience with us. Please download our Scholars Learning app and enjoy. In this video, we will be studying about the flexible exchange rate system. In the previous video, we studied about the fixed exchange rate systems and in this we will be studying about the flexible. Now what does flexible means? Flexible means that it is, it can easily be changed. It can go up, it can go down. So your flexible exchange rate is that exchange rate which is determined by the demand for and supply of different currencies in the foreign exchange market. So it is determined by the market forces the same way the price of the commodity was decided due to the demand and supply of the commodity in the microeconomics in the same way the flexible exchange rate is determined by the demand and supply of the the currency in the foreign exchange market. The market where foreign currencies are demanded and supplied is called foreign exchange market. So we can write it down as flexible exchange rate. It is that rate which is determined by the demand for and supply of different currencies in the foreign exchange Now what is foreign exchange market? It is a market where the foreign currencies are demanded and supplied. Are demanded and Supplied. So your exchange rate is the function of demand and supply of the foreign currencies. Right? See when your demand of foreign currency is equal to the supply of foreign currency, it is also known as the par rate of exchange and it constitutes normal rate or equilibrium rate the rate at the rate which we will get will be the equilibrium rate now why we call it as a flexible rate of exchange because with the change in demand and supply there will be change in the rate of exchange the exchange rate will change if there is change in the demand and supply the merits and demerits of flexible exchange rate system see your merits are number one you can you know that gold reserves are not required. As the flexible rate is determined by the market forces of demand and supply of the foreign uh, currencies, so gold reserves are not required in the system. The second is the international mobility of capital. Now see the flexible exchange rate encourages the mobility of capital across nations. This is due to the fact that member countries are no longer 
required to keep huge international reserves. So there is an international mobility capital of capital which means the countries can invest into the other current, uh, countries. So there will be the mobility of capital which means the foreign exchange will go from one country to the other country easily. Third we have is optimum resource allocation. So if your foreign exchange is flexible you will be allocating your for uh, your currency into different currencies accordingly where you get the maximum profit or max so you are using your resources efficiently and effectively venture capital your flexible rate promotes venture capital in the foreign exchange market Trading in international currencies itself become an important economic activity. So, what happens if there is flexible exchange rate? You can trade in the foreign currencies. You know about the share market. There is also a forex market, similarly as the equity market. So, in the forex market, the foreign currencies are traded due to the flexible exchange rate. So, it gives growth to the venture capital. Now the demerits are number one is your market instability. See flexible exchange rate means you you see that the one dollar is equal to sixty four point six zero rupees today and one dollar is equal to sixty five point five two rupees tomorrow. So this is very flexible. Right, this exchange rate is very flexible, so this gives the investors a high risk factor. So, this causes the market instability. The second is policy formulation becomes difficult. See, if you have foreign. Uh, exchange rate is not stable it keeps on fluctuating every minute then the how will you form the policy so policy formations become very difficult in that case bilateral trade agreements becomes difficult Let's suppose if you have purchased a machine from USA at that day you need to pay 64.60 rupees from one US dollar but when you have to make the payment the US dollar now have become 72 rupees. 0 0.50 which means the time you ordered for the machinery you need to pay only this rupee uh, this rupees for one dollar but now the machinery is delivered to you now the payment date here you have to make this rupee payment for one dollar and suppose the machinery is for two hundred dollars so now you can think that the, the person who is buying is in loss because he has to pay six uh six or approximately six rupees extra so it becomes so bilateral trade agreements becomes difficult i hope you like our video please download our scholars learning app and enjoy the learning experience with us